Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone, uh, before uh, watching this uh, clip, I strongly recommend go check the other trees related and then come and review this one. Now let's do it. As you remember from the first two parts, the osteoid dysfunction causes increasing left atrial uh, pressure and left atrial pressure uh, is very critical for the uh, exchange, the mechanism of exchange gas in the lung and hemodynamic of the pulmonary circulation system, especially pulmonary pressure and finally uh, right ventricle performance. So when we have increased uh, left atrial pressure due to the osteolytic dysfunction, we will have some degree of the pulmonary edema. And finally, uh, we uh, end to the respiratory failure that uh, usually represent uh, with the dyspnea. And on the other side, in the pulmonary disease, especially acute, for example, ARDS, uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome, the presentation will be the same, pulmonary edema and dyspnea. So uh, these uh, two completely different spectral of the uh, pulmonary edema has different treatment. For cardiogenic pulmonary edema, the usually main treatment is diuretic and uh, maybe sometimes was active and inotropic agents. Uh, but in the uh, uh, non-cardiogenic or pulmonary edema due to the lung and uh, pulmonary vascular disorder, uh, usually treatment will be uh, respiratory support like the ventilator on, or PEEP and uh, sometimes uh, pulmonary uh, vascular dilator. Uh, that is completely two spectral and different treatment. So the differentiation between the non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema and cardiogenic pulmonary edema in management of the patient is very critical. And as you remember, uh, we have based on the last uh, guideline by the American and European cardiac uh, societies, we use a three, a four parameters, mitral valve inflow uh, and mitral valve tissue doppler, medial lateral, left atrial volume index, and uh, tricuspid regurgitation. And based on those findings, finally, we end to the three category of those patients, they have the osteolytic dysfunction. In the first group that is uh, grade one or impaired relaxation. Uh, we have some degree of the uh, relaxation and the osteolytic dysfunction, but still uh, left atrial pressure is at the normal range below 8 millimercury. In the second grade or pseudo normal, uh, left atrial pressure is high, around 10 to 18 millimercury. And in restrictive type or grade 3, uh, left atrial pressure is very high over usually 20, some, uh, most of the time over 24 millimercury. And based on that, we know uh, which patient needs uh, what type of the treatment. Here is a more accurate for approaching for uh, grading of the diastolic dysfunction, what we do in each situation. But in one study by uh, Dr. Oywind and colleagues, over uh, 450 patients, uh, and they show that the, this guideline, the accuracy in the di different situation and condition will be different. For example, in those patients with the uh, low ejection fraction below uh, 70, accuracy is 91%. But in patient with normal or H, uh, uh, HF, uh, PEF uh, or left ventricular function uh, almost normal, the accuracy dropped to the 84. And in other patient, as you can see here, uh, overweight patient, diabetic and chronic kidney disease, hypertension, and those has with pulmonary disease like the COPD, the accuracy drops significantly. And not only that, uh, th that guideline is not applicable 
in those patients with arrhythmia, severe arrhythmia, especially atrial fibrillation or flutter or completely irregular rhythm, or patient on the ventilator or acute uh, respiratory distress syndrome. In those situations, uh, those uh, guideline uh, accuracy dropped and usually we don't have those other at least two parameters of those four parameters. So what we have to do in those situations like patient with the AFib uh, or with the sepsis or patient with ventilator, uh, how we can evaluate the osteoic dysfunction and is most important how we can uh, measure and evaluate left atrial pressure because that is the most important parameter for management of the patient now let's see how we can do it in this those situation as general uh, rules in those patients uh, that are very critical and ill like the sepsis, ARD, ARDS, uh, or a patient with arrhythmia or ventilator, all those patients, we can use rule of thumbs of eight. Uh, what does it mean? It means if the lateral E to E prime is uh, more than eight, and a lateral E prime equal or less than eight centimeter per second, um, almost uh, over 90 percent uh, the left atrial pressure is high and uh, we have to avoid uh, of the fluid uh, resociation uh, in those uh, is these cases that we don't have this criteria uh, we can use other parameter that can help uh, to evaluate left atrial pressure among them is a uh, left atrial uh, volume index that if it's equal or more than 34 milliliter per square meter we have to suspicious there is a uh, high uh, left atrial pressure but as you know in the patient with the atrial fibrillation or flutter we will expect to have left atrial enlargement without uh, high uh, pressure in the left atrium just keep in your mind not always and another things is that normal left atrial uh, pressure never rule out uh, the osteoic dysfunction and high LAP because especially when we have acute uh, diastolic dysfunction the left atrial can size can be normal Another parameter that in those uh, patient and situation we can use for measuring and guessing left atrial pressure is uh, A prime. If average A prime velocity is less than uh, 7.25 centimeter per second, uh, it means uh, over 80% of the patient has a high mean left atrial pressure especially in the patient with the preserved ejection fraction. Another fa factor is uh, S to D ratio, if it's less than one, and it be strongly suspicious to the uh, left atrial uh, pressure increased. Another is E deceleration time, if it's less than 160 millisecond. And the other one is IVRT or isovolumetric relaxation time if it's less than 60 millisecond and another that you remember in the second grade of the mitral uh, diastolic dysfunction we had L wave if the L wave peak is over 20 centimeter per second we have to suspicious to high LAP and the other one is fix uh, bowing or an ever fix an mall of intraatrial septum to the right side in that situation even it can it just represent the difference pressure between la and ra but in those situations that uh, left uh, intraatrial septum fixed bulging and to the right atrium we have to go to the civc uh, and measure right atrium. If his right atrium is over five or eight millimercury, in that situation, this affix bulging intraatrial septum to the right represent high left atrial pressure. 
In last a few years, there are many research that has uh, have uh, some hope to measure left atrial pressure in uh, many situations more accurate. Among them are one of them is left atrial strain that uh, in this uh, technique like the other left ventricular strain we do left atrial strain on apical 4 and uh, we measure three parameters left atrial reservoir strain uh, left atrial conduit strain and left atrial pump strain and uh, there are many uh, results and uh, conclusive uh, finding that left atrial strain can be really useful in the evaluation of left atrial uh, pressure. But still, we are at the beginning of the research. Maybe in a few years, we come to the accurate and uh, specific guideline for this technique. Another is left atrial expansion index. It's almost equal as the ejection fraction we do in Simpson. We do on the measuring left atrial volume at end systolic and minus N diastolic of left atrium divided to the left atrial uh, volume at the end systolic multiple hundred. It gives us left atrial uh, expansion index. Another one is in the left ventricular uh, elast uh, elastans uh, ratio to the uh, atrial elastans, as you can see here. And we can calculate by the uh, E to E prime divided by stroke volume or E to E prime divided by left ventricular and the osteolytic volume. And uh, arterial elastans we can uh, calculate by multiple 0.9 to the systolic blood pressure divided by stroke volume. Or another parameter is the ratio of stroke volume to the left atrial volume. All of these are at the beginning and they gave uh, some uh, hopeful uh, result and almost accurate as the invasive technique. And very soon the result uh, uh, with the more uh, study, we will uh, expect to see a better guideline and finding. And another one that has been done recently is uh, B lines on the ultrasound of the uh, lung that uh, is uh, using how many numbers, how many B line on the lung uh, ultrasound we can see and cut off over 15 in four sectors uh, show that is very good indication for the extravasation fluid in the lung. Uh, that I am going to uh, give another lecture about the lung, ultrasound of the lung, and all those A line, B line, C line uh, in very specific lecture, and about the left atrial strain, the same. Uh, very soon, both of them will be uploaded. Here is the algorithm when uh, in those situations, especially patient with the uh, severe respiratory distress and or they are on the ventilator winning failure uh, and ill patient we can use uh, this algorithm to approach evaluation of the left atrial pressure and use the correct uh, and proper uh, management approach we are done up to the next time have a wonderful time